Hey folks, Cuz Strickland here, and it's that time of the year again. This is Mossy Oak Moments Live. I love this time of the year. We got the best content providers ever. Some of them have been on board. We got some new stuff coming up. Whitetails, stuff out west. I love this. Don't forget, hey, help your older buddies or your dad put the Mossy Oak Go app on their phone. It's free, and they can tune in every Wednesday night and check all this stuff out. Hey, let's get rolling. You know, every everything out here is uh, just a little bigger, especially when you're coming from from back home. You're usually confined to pretty tight views in one direction, uh, wherever you're hunting. And out here, it's like every single place you go, wherever you hike, there's just you can see from miles and miles in every direction. Every sunset and sunrise are just free and breathtaking. I don't think we're in West Point anymore. Traded the gobble for a bugle. You know, it doesn't matter if I've got a, a bow or a rifle or not. Um, I just love every second of being out here. And there's just something about, you know, going up and up and above where you normally are, and especially for us coming from Mississippi and not getting that scenery uh, on a regular basis. It's just, you know, I mean, every, every second and every detail gets me going. Exact opposite of this morning. Didn't hear hardly anything, and now hearing some elk. Group up there is fun to watch. Really, nothing we can do with the wind like it is, but a couple of bulls playing with each other. Decent amount of bee clip. A couple of nice bulls up in there, big old group. That was a strong one.
is. The first day and a half, we were just trying to play catch up to him, and we were seeing him from a long way away. But there, uh, two hunts where we hiked up dang near the top of Three Forks Mountain, and, and there were elk everywhere. But you know, they were the wind was the wrong direction for us to get aggressive. And then once we had the right wind, uh, they were moving too fast for us, uh, moving from ridge to ridge, and we couldn't catch up to them. And the they all kind of where we couldn't hunt them, and so we decided to mix it up and go to a new location the uh, next afternoon. And I've got a big open. 
he's coming across, he's coming across. On some cows, and now it's kind of going to go up. Kind of by that brush, you see. Him. Yeah. He's about 185 yards. We're just going to go right behind the shoulder. He's threshing all this stuff. Yeah. Yep. That's that cool. We're just going to go right behind the shoulder. He's running to the right. If you can put another one in him, he's gonna stop. Go ahead and put another one in him. Just. Padre's view over there. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's just nothing, there's nothing more fun because you kind of, everything we hunt at home, you coexist with them because your woods are their woods. But out here, you know, when you really busted up the mountain and you get in there and you can smell the elk where they've been bedded down and you can see all the sun <sighs> and you're out of breath from hiking up there, it's freaking, it's just cooler than any experience that we have. That's Taylor. <laughs> Taylor's the freaking best. The nicest, <laughs> nicest guy I've ever hunted with in my entire <laughs> life. I was cool, as, my hands are shaking, but I was cool as a cucumber with her. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, thank you. It doesn't get any better. It does not. I mean, that's a freaking beautiful rack. His horns look like somebody just charred them. I can't wait to, I don't know who is uh, coming to hunt Three Forks next, but I will be tagging along in their back pocket. I don't, I don't need a tag, but every single spot that we've heard a bull bugle and chase them up to. Even if they get away from you, you turn around and you're like, holy freaking cow. <laughs> Everything out here is beautiful. It's like, so that, so that hour and uh, 40 minutes, yeah, that hour and 40 minutes, look. Yeah, I'm down there, I'm down right now. Yeah. Oh, I see. Because that's going to be your angle. Yeah, okay, well, here's me. I made a dress light on the way and I said, I don't want to make you sweat going. So I gotta rely on the face here, not the bottom. Okay. Which is not the best place to be on in the by any means. But this is the only place I got a good deer showing up, so I gotta try. I give all the credit to God about killing this deer right now. He's given me this ability to be able to get on deer like this and figure them out and kill them. It's all him. I'm just the tool that he uses and somehow I'm hoping that he's using this tool for me to show my faith to people and that I believe in God and Jesus Christ and that that's truly what's most important in life. Big deer, awesome, but Jesus is king. Come on, Chico. I got him. 
Oh, oh my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That sucker came downwind of me, man. And uh, that's just a testament to Faye's Black Widow product right there. I was this close to packing everything up. Oh my gosh. This is awesome. Yes. I just killed the biggest deer I've killed in a couple years. Sit. He was on a string then, come work that scrape that we put the branch butter on yesterday, and he come right in and uh, just power drive with the mega meat. Oh my goodness, what a stud. We just killed a giant, Javen. He's yeah. dead right there. Oh my God, what a giant. We work so hard when we get on deer like this, and I mean, Dude, it's just amazing. What a deer. Dude. A scissors. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I told you it was, dude. Every year, especially in Ohio, my home state, I try to target a specific deer. That's just the challenge that lives within me, and I just enjoy that. I like to be able to pick out a certain deer and play the chess match. I can remember at a younger age, when I really first started targeting specific bucks, how much time I would spend running the roads, looking at fields, just hours trying to find a specific deer. One of the things that I do, it starts out obviously with the new technology of trail camera. That has really changed the game for a lot of people to have more information with less intrusion into your farms and your property. Because I believe almost 80% of killing a large animal is intrusion factor. I just want to fish for a little bit, see what's in here. So I'm just going to scatter some big tine out here a little bit. It's early June, you know, mid June, to see what, you know, deer just starting to get some headgear a little bit. Should be able to tell if there's any mature deer living right here close. So I want to face my camera north as much as possible when I set cameras up, especially on stuff like this where you've got a mineral lick or putting a little feed out because when your camera's facing north, it don't get the sun blaring into it. And basically, all times of the day, you'll get the best pictures you can get. I love these Spartan cameras. Especially when you're in hill country like I live, it saves you a lot of a lot of wasted time of walking up hills when you don't need to or penetrating areas to check camera cards when you really don't want to be leaving your scent around. When you're using these Spartans, it's really good when you first get them going, <clears throat> always send yourself a test, test picture. That way, and then check your app. That way you'll know. Make sure everything's working. See how cool the app is. It just shows you all your pictures and all the cameras you, in the line. And there you can see, there's Dave looking at me with the camera. That's how fast it sends them too, so it's pretty cool. Trail cameras play an integral part in spacing them out in areas that, you know, I can catch patterns or just see what kind of deer are in the general area, and then I can start fine tuning from there. In 2021, I was running cameras all summer in Ohio. Well, this year, you know, I'd, I'd spaced out some of those scrapes. Finally, I had a really nice deer show up on the farm, and I like oh my gosh I know that deer and I had thought maybe the deer had been killed when he was younger I was like it's really not a genetically good deer and he would be a good one to take out of the herd because he had really short g2s and he didn't have much brows and he was just kind of the deer that I really didn't think would turn into much well here he was two years later and bam and I was like holy smokes this is a big deer so all my focus shifted to the deer I now call Roman. I had also told myself going into 2021 that I wanted to enjoy my season just a little bit more. A lot of times I only hunt right on the time I'm going to kill that deer. Like, you know, and I don't even really get to enjoy the fall, the season, until I go out of state. So I told myself this year I was going to put a little more pressure on actually hunting than I normally do. And I just want to get out there and enjoy it. Wow, it's October 16th. I'm hunting a deer I call Roman. And there's another big deer here that I've had for a couple years, and you've seen him on video too. The big eight point. And I didn't hunt him last year because I killed early on splits. So I never hunted the big eight, and he was actually 
probably in his prime last year. He had a big sticker coming out of his box. Um, but still a basic eight. But he was big, and he's still big. But I think he's lost a little bit. He's a seven and a half year old deer this year. But Roman, I think, is a prime five and a half, six and a half year old buck. I've had him a couple years here. But he's got real short G2s that kick back and towering G3s. Big frame deer. He's just a, he's a cool looking buck. I've had Roman right here working these scrapes quite a bit. Last night he was in here on the Spartan camera just a little bit after dark. I mean like 40 minutes after dark. That's the earliest he's ever moved into this out of the basic giant timber that he's living in. And it's really hard for me to get on him in the timber in there because there's just so many deer in this farm that I blow deer out trying to get in there anywhere to hunt him on oak flats or anything like that. So I've been trying to just bide my on him on the edge, like white tail edge. It's just, I've got these scrapes that I made with Black Widow deer lures, mock scrapes, and they're just destroying them. Every mature buck on the farm has hit these two scrapes right here. And both scrapes are within 38 yards of each other. I got a little big time clover plot right here, right by that scrape, and then he empties out into a nice uh, grass, clover, hay field type deal right here that's really lush and been cut not too long so they really are digging it. There's always a lot of deer in this field in daylight, so I'm just hoping he wants to come to the field and check the girls out, maybe show his dominance, um, just strut his stuff. That's what he's been doing. He's been popping on different cameras on the farm. Before, I was just getting him once a week on one camera or so, and now all of a sudden I'm getting him on two, three cameras. So he's feeling his oats a little bit. Hopefully this weather change is going to put him out to where we can see him in daylight. Roman starts to show himself a little more. And that's starting to tell me that, okay, he's figuring out that this place is just a little bit safer than where he has been. Because he's showing up on some of these scrapes. He's getting really aggressive. And I can tell he's showing his dominance. Like, he is making this farm his now. He's kind of pushing some of the older deer around. That's where the Black Widow scrapes really can tell me these stories. And you can really tell a pattern. The red moon is coming up. We're going to have the right kind of weather. Everything's aligning that I can start hunting this deer. My name is Ben Rising, and I own Whitetail Edge. I'm 47 years old, and I'm an American, born and bred in the USA. When it comes to picking out a tree stand, I'm only going to use one that's made right here. Made here by people that live here for people that hunt here. That is Novix. I'm about 175, 200 yards in off the field. I've got bedding 
all down below me. They filter out this ridge and go up into that field. But I don't know if that's what he's doing. I've got his picture on a Spartan camera radar in his trail one time, but it was three in the morning. So I don't feel like this is the exact trail he uses to get to the field all the time. But what I'm hoping is that I can see him from a distance somewhere. I'm hoping that I can uh, get his goat a little bit with some black widow deer lure. I got some matriarch. It's an older doe coming in to eat type lure. If I happen to see him and I don't think he's coming to me, then I'll try to work him. I'll test him, see what he does. If he doesn't feel like he wants it, then I'll just back off and let him do his thing. But I'm gonna get settled in here, and shut my mouth, and sit tight. I started to get a little more feel for what Roman was doing and I'd set a stand in the timber. I'd hunted some edges a little bit. I just felt really good about it. It was kind of on a bench. I could see down in the hollow kind of where I felt like he was going to be coming from. And after a couple of sits, I had laid eyes on Roman just a few times, but at a distance. And I could tell that he was definitely a big deer, definitely a deer I wanted to hunt, and he was definitely smart. But he also was kind of roaming the property. He was the king. I'm on the same stand I did last evening. Here's my thought process. So yesterday, he walked by that camera down below, going in there to bed. Yesterday evening, he did walk back by that camera in daylight. I didn't know it on my cell phone camera just because like the service is sketchy here. And I didn't know it till I got home, which no big deal. So my thought process was being that he moved twice by that one spot yesterday. He went this way this morning to bed down. I'm hoping he comes right back by tonight, following all those does out of here, out to the field. That's my hope. We'll see. He's a big old deer. You never know what they're gonna do. I really feel like I've honed in on Roman's core spot in his bedding area. And I kind of had one of those damp afternoons. The red moon was approaching, you know, according to the moon guide, but it wasn't quite here yet. But the weather was just right. I mean, things felt good. And so I'm like, you know, I'm going to go hunting this evening anyways. And I'm, I got the right wind to hunt that bench. And I might just catch that deer in between, you know, in that staging area because I could tell from the cameras he was really getting aggressive on scrapes. And I think he's gonna be on his feet in the timber if I can get in there. I get up into my stand quietly and I have my tension pack on. I look around and there's a doe. And she is at like 40 yards bedded. I'm like, oh man. So at that point, I'm extra cautious, I'm trying to get my bow up the tree, and 
I catch a movement to the right of that doe, about 10, 12 yards, and here's Roman. He's standing there looking at her. I'm like, I don't believe this. I don't have my camera arm in the tree, nothing. I've got a GoPro on a head mount, so I stick it on my head, I turn the thing on, and by this point, I've got an arrow knocked, I've got my bow, and he's moving out of range, I'm not gonna get a shot wasn't going to be great footage anyways but I'm like you know this may be my only opportunity I just I don't know what to do here finally I'm like you know what I'm gonna rattle to him with this black rack. So I start sparring a little bit and then I get into it pretty heavy for a second and I stop. And instantly he stops, looks up, flicks his tail, and he starts coming. I just screwed up. I just absolutely misjudged the distance. I didn't range it. I think it's one of those things of self-filming in an intense situation like that. You just do things you shouldn't do. And I just, he was getting by me and I stopped him. And when I shot, I mean, he ducks like crazy. Even so, I think I was still too high. So I'm actually glad he ducked the way he did so I didn't hit him bad. And he freaks out, takes on out of there, and I was like deflated. I'm like, son of a gun. All right, I hope you're enjoying it. I can't get over how good the content. It just gets better and better every year. Don't, don't leave. We got a lot more coming up. I'm Daniel Hayes here at the Malcio Cabin, and today we're cooking smash burgers. Uh, this is elk meat. Pretty much every time we're cooking these, we're either using uh, deer or elk, and we've got a little elk left over. The good thing about smash burgers is you can prep all the patties beforehand, make these nice little patties. They're gonna smash down pretty thin, so <clears throat> usually we're cooking doubles. It doesn't take but three minutes maybe uh, on medium high heat to get these patties ready to serve. So if you're cooking for a big crowd, we've got the smaller two burner griddle today with cast iron on one side. So we're just gonna be doing a few patties at a time. But if you've got a big crowd and you've got a bigger burner, you can crank through these patties a bunch at a time if you're serving for a lot of people. So anyway, we're gonna get started. So there's a lot of little different ways that people like to do their smash burgers, but you usually need a little bit of oil fat under your patty. It really doesn't matter what you do, but it's kind of fun to use the squirt mayo. So uh, that's usually what I use. So pull a little bit of mayo down, drop patty on there. Like I said, we're doing four patties at a time on this little burner. We've got the griddle up to medium high heat and it's probably a little above that right now. It's pretty piping hot. What I usually like to do, you can do it either way. If you drop the onions down on top, it'll usually keep the meat from sticking to the spatula. But if you give it a little sear when they're still balled up and then flip it, then you can smash it on top where the meat is and it won't stick. So drop a little bit of onion on top. And you can go ahead and smash the heck out of it because the thinner the better, it gets a little crispy. It's gonna be nice and juicy, everything cooks quick. Gets a good hard sear. 
And the good thing about dropping the onions on here is that they get scattered all over the grill. So if you really like cooked onions, you got a lot of little bits all along the side that you're going to drop on the burger at the end of it. So it really just takes about two minutes and you'll see the edges of the burgers will start to look done before you're ready to flip. About two minutes when you're cooking on medium high. All we put on top of there is salt and pepper and you can wait and throw that on after they're already smashed down on the griddle. Sprinkle a little bit. I like a lot of black pepper but seasoned salt and pepper to taste. Alright, so these are ready to flip. What we're going to do when we flip them over is flip and then immediately add the cheese. And usually, right when the cheese gets melted, the burgers are ready to eat. They don't need but about a minute on this side. And we're making doubles, so if you want to get a light on the cheese and just toss one slice on there, that's cool. But, you know, I'll say the more the merrier. Usually about this time, We'll have another burner on low, get that good and buttered, and then drop a couple of your buns face down on there. Makes it a little less messy than putting the butter on the outside. Gets it nice and toasty. All this, the, the buns and the patties will be ready all at about the same time. So if you've got a, a platter to drop them on when you're finished, everything kind of Buns are toasty, cheese is melty. You can flip the patties over right on top of each other and then drop them straight onto the bun. Just like that, probably three minutes from start to finish. Perfectly toasted buns, perfectly melty cheese, perfect meat, and they're good to eat. There you have it. We got six double smash elk burgers right here. So beginning to end, literally three minutes to a delicious looking burger. Make sure you get all the uh, patties patted out beforehand because that makes everything run smoothly whenever you got your whole station out beside the grill, but any grill master already knows that. Cheese on top after you flip it butter the buns, add a little pickles on top of there if you want to, and anything else you need to know you can find in the, in the copy. But Wild Game Smash Burgers, there you have it. Well, we, uh, I'm running late. Had to play in a golf tournament today. This celebrity golf tournament had a bunch of uh, baseball players, basketball players. It was pretty cool. Met some cool people. It was fun. Didn't hit them that well. Hopefully, I shoot better. Arrows tonight than I hit golf balls today. That's all. only thing we can hope. So we're going to go over here, hunt this stand. I call a 7-up sawtooth. Killed a seven, pretty big 7-point here many moons ago. So there's been a good 10 pointer there. A couple other deer, Duncan somewhere around. I hunted him here last year. So there's some deer here that we'll see a lot of deer. I'll have to ask very nicely for uh, Nick here to hold me off those because we will be seeing lots of does within bow range. So if I can hold off on them, I think we've got a pretty good chance of seeing maybe killing a buck. Last night was a great opportunity. It didn't happen, but could be tonight. Thank you. 
best a couple of big scrapes, fresh scrapes right So we're gonna get out of here. We got rain coming, but hopefully it's just gonna be a little bit of a mist and uh, maybe get them deer on their feet. Wish us luck. Even paying me no attention. That's okay. Let's come back to the All right, so a little rainy afternoon today. I got in here a little bit late because it's raining kind of hard. Probably should have got on in here, but honestly, I'd been out on tractor and I hadn't seen any deer. As soon as it let up, felt before it started moving. So we were coming in, we saw a lot of deer.
just been able to shoot and see the last probably 10 minutes and it's been shooting light for, gosh, probably almost 30 minutes. Just a weird time right now. Just seen a mom and a spike, mom and doe, walked by our other stand over there. We can hear, it's so thick in front of us, it's a good understory, but we can't see that good unless they come pretty close to us, but we can hear a couple deer in there. We're looking for that that sticker 10 or that big huge body date. I know both of them have been coming through here somewhere. We seen the sticker 10 the other morning. My dad did too. Hopefully one of them won't make an appearance today. We got the tech mine in next streak. Five outings in a row. Mature buck. I'm a nose it. That might be a good sign. Big dog right there. If we watch a big shooter go right through there. I'm on. Our little sweet gum tree is tied over there. You don't know where they're going to go. Heck, they don't know where they're going to go. You on it. Did you get him coming up through there pretty good? Yeah, I did. I, I, I should. 
I should have shot him right there. I thought he was going to keep doing this. But once he got right here, I thought it was over. Yes. But I had to make sure you could see him right here. I mean, so close. Oh, man. I'm, I'm anxious to see the hit, but I didn't really... I didn't even really settle in because, like, all my pins were on him. You know, I just, I was like, top ones in the lungs. I knew it was going to shoot a little higher right there. But I was hoping I didn't hit him too low, but I definitely hit him. Yeah, he's tall. I'm, I'm glad you seen him because he was quiet as a mouse. I'm looking over here. And that's an odd spot for him to do. Come down here and then go around. Whew, that's a deer I've had plenty of pics of this summer, but you know, I'm hoping my shot good. It was so close. I had to shoot around my bag and some leaves right there. I just hope I didn't hit him too low. He, he got real squirrely like he was gonna fall right there. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I shouldn't have missed him right there. I could have shot him with my recurve. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. We needed that. Yeah. Look can at him right, right, right under us. Can you see it right Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. When I didn't know about my shot, but when he got in that opening right there, mm -hmm. he, he kind of, he like almost, I thought he was going to fall right there. Well, maybe you are good luck. That was six, six in a row. It's, it's unbelievable, really. That'd be good for Iowa, much less Georgia. Hey, we're trying, we're trying to leave. All right, let me talk to Cash. Buddy, guess what? I just shot a big 10 point. Yes. The one that we saw last time? No. No, this is a different one. This one's bigger. Awesome, Daddy. You, you, you want me to show you where he was standing? Look. Yeah. See, here's my bow. He come, he come walking right up through here. Oh, really? And I shot him right there. Yeah. All right. I'll see you later, buddy. Love you. I love you. Call me on the way to school. Call me on the way to school. I right, bye. Well, I would say it never happens like that, but we've had six hunts in a row. We've had a mature deer probably within 50 yards. But that's the first one we've let an arrow fly on. He come walking up here. Nick, I was looking over here behind us. Nick said, big buck. And as soon as I turned around, I see that deer walking right up that trail. It's an old trail we mowed with our bell. Uh, last year, Dave came in here and mowed some trails and I wore my bell hat. I was like, we gotta change up something this morning. Thank God, that was a good luck hat. And uh, he come in right here. And I probably could have shot him slightly broadside, 25, 30 yards, but he was walking. I said, let him come, let him come. I thought he was going to come right here and give me a perfect broadside shot. But he come right here. And once he got underneath these limbs, like he was coming straight to us, I thought it was over. I'm, I'm like, I'm about to watch this deer walk right under me with no shot because it's real thick behind us. And he decided to come right up in the path that Dave did mow about a month ago that goes through this understory to get to our stand. And he kind of sniffed around. I was worried he was going to blow out because of smelling where we'd walked in and mm -hmm. dropping the bow, the whole shebang. And that gave us all the time we needed. Because had he not stopped, I don't know, you know, that would have been tough. But he stopped right there and we, we smoked him. That was what we call top pin. He was, we tried to figure out how far he was from the, somewhere between three and four yards. If we just watched that back and I'm like shooting straight down. And I honestly didn't take my time because he was so close. I'm like, every pin I had was on that deer's vitals. No, well, 
I didn't. And, and you got, you know, I've always said shooting down like, hey, you're going to shoot so high. So I tried to lower it a little. That slick trick tore him up. He jumped over there. And when he got about 30 yards, I was like, man, did I, did I hit him low? I know I hit him. I heard it hit him. And his back end kind of wobbled. And he just bounced, bounced, bounced. And my guess is he fell over there by that dead pine tree. Somewhere in that region. It's kind of been a, just a, a weird morning. The Verizon towers were out, so I had no communication. You know, I didn't know if Dave was hunting. Nick and Kyle were up. Who knows? And uh, I get down here. And uh, felt like it was kind of, it was just weird. And Dave's phone was out, so then I started researching it when I got the Wi-Fi. But you never know when something like that. You don't know if it's some type of cyber attack or what. And then we get up here and we've had a good morning. We sat here Saturday and Sunday and seen what three deer total I think. But Sunday morning started our good luck streak and that was just meant to be. Good Lord seen it fit. He's he's not real wide. He's probably fifteen inches wide, but he's tall. He's got a some tall twos, threes, fours, the whole shebang. Feels good when it does. First week, we got a big buck down. A big, big Georgia deer. It's gonna be one of my bigger ones ever with a bow. Heck, I mean, he's Pope Young. He'll be a net Pope Young. I haven't killed too many of those in Georgia. Yeah, that's a good feeling. He went through here, didn't he? Oh, right here, right here. <laughs> That's funny. I was like, I thought he went right here, all on that tree. See this blood now? No, but I just assumed he was going down this trail. He could have veered off to the left or right. Yeah, right here. Right there, I think. Yes. It looks pretty good. here oh man what have we here oh good gosh look at this man it was just it was just hard to see dang he is good. oh he's got a, a, a five on him yeah baby Ooh. Big old bodied sucker. Holy cow, his time's about touch. That's a cool deer. Oh man. Good times all the way around. Kind of almost like a split brow. Oh man, that was a low, a low exit. The exit was in the white. Man, he ran, uh, what do you think, Nick? He ran about 100 yards, 120. We thought he was dead by this pine, dead pine, and we weren't far off, 30, 40 yards. But man, he, uh, it, was, it was tough to see the blood. I mean, there's so much, it's rain the last three days straight, on and off. 
And so everything's so wet, so unless that blood was hitting something green, you couldn't see it. And it was watered down then. But he was buried up in here, and that's what I told Nick. I said, you gotta stay on this blood, because he's gonna jut off in one of these thickets. He's a pretty deer. He's not, you know, 15 inches wide, but he's, he's gonna score good, just because he's got long beams and long tines, and I'm not even worried about score, but he's a cool deer. Beautiful deer. He's full of ticks. Well, I mean, you know, after I shot this deer, I looked at Nick and I said, man, maybe you are good luck. We've had a really good week and it's not like we haven't had any encounters. We've had pretty much encounter after encounter. I think we said it was six hunts in a row we've had an encounter with a mature deer. And that's the way I feel about this farm. We don't have any, you know, mega giants. I mean, no Mr. Mumbles 180 type deer like last year, but we got just, it kind of reminds me of Illinois. Just a lot of mature deer that are a lot of fun to hunt. And when they move in the daylight, it, it is fun. Hey guys, we're out here before deer season starts, checking on some stands, putting up some new ones. We just wanna go over a few safety tips so you can have a safe and enjoyable season. Okay, so the most important thing about being safe while, while hunting in a stand or hanging a stand is that you need to be connected to the tree at all times. When your feet are not on the ground, you need to be completely connected. This tree is, is you know, it, it's new, so we have to hang a safety line up at the very top. This could be an instance where somebody would, would want to climb the ladder without being connected, but you can use a lineman's belt and you just, you just wrap it around the tree, pull it up as you go. Once you get to the top, you can adjust your, your safety line with the prussic knot that you can slide up as you go. But, but this is the initial way to get started and be safe when your feet leave the ground. Hey guys, welcome back to Dream Season Live. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Tonight I am sitting in a watchtower blind. This is a Hawk office blind, uh, the blind that I call the watchtower on this farm. And it's because I can see this, this whole top um, from here. See a long ways and, and I've had some great encounters in this spot during bow season. Just haven't quite been able to connect on something that I was excited about. I've passed a ton of great deer this year but uh, the table has turned a little bit. I've got a gun tag in my pocket and I can reach out a little bit farther. So hopefully the cold weather tonight uh, changes things. We've had about a 20 degree drop in temperature and uh, we will sit here tonight and see what happens. But you guys are about to watch a hunt that I had earlier in November. Uh, this is an elk hunt that was put on by the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. And it's something that I was blessed to be a part of uh, very, very, happy obviously that um, I was able to do this um, typically I would be in a tree stand in the first week of November but uh, this year was something a little bit different like I said it's different circumstances and something that I'm not going to pass up on going out to Colorado um, and hunting with the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation and it, it was a blast. This week in Colorado has been a lot of fun a lot of great memories made uh, with great people it uh, yeah it started off very slow but it just goes from zero to 100 in, in no time. And just, just like that, it can turn around at any moment. And it did, and it's been a, it's been a ton of fun. Oh, there's a mill deer. Yeah. 
Well, it is late October and uh, I am just pulling into Trinidad, Colorado. We got a cold front coming in in Iowa and we also got a cold front coming in here over the weekend and I'm going to be going after elk this week and uh, we'll get this thing started. But I'm excited. Deercast says great at home, which is a bummer because I'm not there, but I actually opened it up and uh, Deercast says great here too. So we'll see how that applies to the, the elk woods and uh, we'll get it started. Stick with us. It's the first morning here in Colorado. Marty's gonna lead me up the hill here and see if we can't get after a, a bull he's seen in here. Opening morning, we'll see what we can uh, stir up, but Marty's gonna lead me in the right direction, so we'll go take a peek. Looks like there's a couple bulls in here. Our tracks coming up this road. We're gonna sneak up to kind of this higher point up here so we can glass this whole backside behind us. It's a beautiful morning, thin air, sun's coming up. It's a good place to be. It's the morning of day two, and uh, we're back in these meadows that we were in last night, and uh, kind of waiting to see if there's any elk that are gonna come, come up out of this bottom here in front of us. Uh, but if not, we'll probably work up around on top and uh, see if we can't find a bull. It's awful quiet, awful calm. It should be cooler today than it has been the last couple days, so hopefully we can, hopefully we can find something and make a move on it. Beautiful morning in Colorado. It's the morning of day three in uh, beautiful Colorado. We're back in the same spot we were last night. We got on some elk up in the timber, um, but as, as they came down, we couldn't quite figure out where they were gonna come down at. And we never did get a good look at them, but there's a bull in there. I think he's got a bunch of cows with him. So we figured they were probably feeding down here last night. So now it's just a matter of finding them. But kind of ease our way up through here. He was bugling last night. It would sure help if he would rip one off this morning, but we'll see. The game of cat and mouse continues. We'll keep after it, see if we can't find a good one.
our setup on this meadow. And uh, last night, this is where we think they came down through. They've been coming down in here. Marty seeded a whole bunch of uh, grass and clover here earlier this year, and there's still some green shoots coming up. So winds in our favor. So if they end up going further north, we can go after them. But it's going to be a good night. I can feel it. It's a little cooler north wind. Deer are up feeding already, so it should be a good night. We'll sit tight and see what happens. Should I shoot him again? If you can get one in him. Good hit. Good hit. He's down. He's down. stud bull yeah I mean we haven't seen we hadn't seen an elk for two and a half days and I was still feeling pretty good just about hiking around the mountains but kind of starts to wear on the whole group not being able to get into them but man it changed tonight they were bedded pretty much the same spot they were yesterday and I'm figuring this is probably where they came down yesterday when we couldn't get on them but yeah, we came down, they came down out of there and I could see him and I could shoot him, but the camera couldn't get on him. And then the camera was on him and I couldn't see him. And they were kind of side hilling across here. And I thought, I thought it was over. And those, those two little bulls came down in the bottom. And I think he kind of came over to run them off a little bit. 
and when he did he got back in range and got the go-ahead from the cameraman and all set put it on him a couple good shots down he went and he didn't go anywhere what what a beautiful bull and what an awesome opportunity state of colorado's got a quarter million elk but we just needed one and this is the one. Oh man i'm tickled what a stud that is my biggest bull elk to date and I, it's something that i'm very blessed to be a part of uh, i can't thank the rocky mountain elk foundation enough for putting that on um, and for letting me be a part of it it was a great hunt great experience with great people um, and it's something that i'll look back on forever uh, as, as just a really awesome trip Here's to the perfect day of hunting with the DeerCast 10 day forecast. Get ahead of your game with DeerCast. You know, we at Drury Outdoors have had a long standing relationship with Mossy Oak that spans some 30 plus years. As we've watched Mossy Oak grow, we've watched them allow a lot of their people to connect with the outdoors. And one of the is Mossy Oak Properties, the Land Brokerage Division. You know, we had a unique opportunity to list a parcel of property with uh, Mossy Oak Properties. Exactly how they listed it on the carpet side, the wording that they chose, and those listing agents understand rural property. They understand what you're trying to do and really what you believe in and what your passions are. It's good to know that you've got an agent that understands your passion. So if you're buying or if you're selling, uh, check out mossyoakproperties.com and uh, give them a chance because they understand the passion, particularly in the outdoors, the way we, uh, the way we are passionate about the sport of hunting. Uh, by all means, if you haven't checked them out, please do. Go to mossyoakproperties.com. Man, oh man, what a hunt, Taylor. Congratulations to you on such an awesome bull. I know that that is a, uh, a bucket list item for just about every Midwest hunter to try and get out west and, and get a big bull killed and, and you've accomplished that. So congrats to you. Today I'm out here on my farm in North Missouri. I'm actually taking Reconyx cameras, pulling them off some scrapes, getting them moved to a food source. Uh, on this particular farm, I've got a clover plot and a bean plot. So I've got green and grain. As you can see behind me, have a muddy penthouse, a blind set up and it is ready to go. I architected this food plot uh, specifically for this blind. So probably get out here on this field, try and do some muzzleloader hunting uh, later in the month. Hopefully we have uh, a new shooter show up and the food plots do their trick and, and pull them in and we'll be here uh, ready. So uh, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching Loopholds Dream Season Live powered by DeerCast. Hi, welcome back again to the Muddy Bull Blind. It's a second season gun here in Iowa. And my son Bryson here still has season tag to fill. So he's been very patient. The times we have gone out, we've had opportunities at immature, smaller deer. Uh, but he set a goal to kill a mature buck. So that's what we're trying to get done. He's got the Winchester 350 Legend in hand. So that's kind of windy, but we're over a biologic Brassica uh, Plus plot or Brassica plot. It's the same, well, it's the same field that I killed my early muzzleloader buck in, and this, this area tends to fill up with deer this time of year, so. Otherwise, my bow season was actually really, really good. Uh, I passed up a lot of nice deer and was on to a buck that I call Greco and kind of got my sights set on him. I had uh, three hunts that I was really, really close to sealing the deal, and it just didn't quite work out. Been really close with the bow, but not quite sealed the deal yet. Uh, plans for late season. If we don't get one kill for Bryson, we'll obviously get out late muzzleloader with him. We'll have to change up the weapon, of course. But uh, for me, as far as bow hunt goes, uh, I've got an area in particular where there's quite a bit of corn left, so I'll probably focus on that. Uh, here in November, Taylor killed a great elk. Uh, congratulations, Taylor. That's a stud. Uh, I know he had a, a long week of hunting out there. It wasn't working out, and then towards the end, he was able to seal the deal on a great bull. So. Thanks again for following and watching Dream Season Live. It's been a great season so far, and there's still quite a bit of season left ahead of us. I know several team members still have gun tags in their pocket. 
We haven't gotten the cold weather that really good yet. And when that hits, I think there's gonna be a lot of bucks at the ground. So keep checking back. And again, thanks for watching Dream Season Live. I'll tell you a quick story. I've been doing this forever. I've hung more lock-ons in the middle of the night at riders camps than you can imagine all that. Been there, done it. This past weekend, put a ladder stand up for my grandkids. They like them two-man ladders. They're just now getting into tree stands, tying all the life lines on. I know how to do it. We got finished, and this particular ladder stand, there was a lock-on that had been there for years, three, four, five years behind it. And I was like, that's a good place for dad to sit or we can come film. But anyway, it was too high. All right, I was down on the ground, had taken my harness off. And I said, well, I'm gonna just run up there and just unclip it. That's all I was gonna do. So anyway, I climbed up the ladder stand, grabbed the lock on, and I had to step over in it to reach around to grab the thing to undo it. One whole side of the frame snapped, just snapped a metal brace snapped in half and luckily it didn't drop but about that far there's a limb under it but that that could have been horrible right there so don't think just because you've been doing it a long time you got it all figured out i would my fault for not putting my harness on and going back up there so i'm gonna be there 30 seconds it can happen to anybody if it can happen to me it can happen to anybody so remember they have tree stand safety month for a reason I always stay attached from the ground up and back down lifeline, safety harness, the whole thing. Do it for the people that care about you. Hey guys, so we're in the woods pre-season, checking old stands, setting new stands. And we found an extreme example that, that covers all the bases of what you don't want when you're, when you're about to climb a tree. It's very important if you're a guest at, an, at another hunting club or it's a set that you know you didn't hang yourself to double check for, for all of these problems. And, and if you find one problem, you should turn around and go hunt another area. So here's what you need to look for before you climb into any tree stand. First thing is, is the tree alive or is it suffering? Uh, there's clearly mushrooms growing on this tree that means it's either stressed or already dead. It, it could be the middle of the winter and, and you don't see leaves on any tree, so you've got to look for other signs of life. These mushrooms are a clear indicator. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of, you know, bug chaff and, and stuff like that. Now, looking at the ladder, it, it's obvious this ladder has a lot of age. You, you see some, you know, mold and whatnot. The straps are tight and they're, they're dry rotted. I can, I can see moss and stuff growing on it. And look at this water accumulated in here over the winter, it froze and expanded, and it's, it's cracked this pipe. You see it down here as well. So, mushrooms, dead tree, crack from the ice. Obviously, there's a lot of age. The straps are dry rotted. This is a clear no-go, and it, it needs to be marked or taken on so somebody doesn't accidentally climb it. So before you get into any stand, especially one that you don't own and, and hung yourself that season, double check everything. Check it once, twice, three times, just to be sure.
the thing about Billy Freetag's operation out there is he's got, he's got a lot of ground blinds, which works great for us with the cameras. We can get in the blind with a bow hunter and we got plenty of room to, to move and do pans and, and whisper and not be spotted. He leaves those ground blinds out there year round. So the deer basically don't pay any attention when they're coming in. They go through these little cuts in these canyons and they go to these water holes and they go through these crossings where these trails are and those blinds are out there the whole time. And it's just a dynamite way to film television but also get a big deer in bow range. bow hunting only and you can tell even riding in riding out that the deer don't get tons of pressure and that's the key is keeping that pressure down it's uh 20 minutes till six we've been here about an hour and a half a little over an hour and a half and we've probably seen 15 deer every single one of them went and drank from that a little spring right there, it's a natural spring, stays wet. And all these oak trees out here, these gray looking trees, I call them blackjack oaks. I think that's what they are, I don't know. And all those deer eating acorns, going to the water, going back. And there's little yearlings, mewing, and there's all kinds of activity. Big mule deer. Now, unfortunately, Chris Henley was with me in the blind, couldn't see. He was to my right, and he couldn't get the camera out the window I was looking in, and he didn't get the deer till it came right up to the, the window by the blind. I was trying not to look. I'd peek to make sure it was coming, and I'd peek, and I was trying not to look at those antlers. And and despite being a bow hunter my whole life and being around this kind of stuff all the time, I almost lost it. Look at that. You got a little non typical stuff going on. You believe that? So one, two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five. What'd I tell you? What'd I tell you, brother? Good goodness. Do they get bigger than that? Do they get bigger than that? Check that out. How about that, brother? Unbelievable. If anybody ever tells you you ain't the man, call me. I'm going to go talk to him. <laughs> it was late, but he came out. He's by himself, and I'm telling you, I like to have lost it. I it's, think I would have. It's something, something, about, it's something about a great old big mule deer. You know, it just it shook me up big time. I told uh, Chris, who's running the camera, when I got done up here, I said, I ain't touching until I get Talio. He drove the first one out. He's gonna have me drag the second. Yeah, I see why you brought me up there now. <laughs> you down with that? Oh, heck yeah. Something really? just like this. It don't get any better than this. You are wow. the best. I need to get some. You're getting old. 
We both get another one. You ain't dragging. You just hold. You trying to hurt me? You just want to hear me breathe bad, don't? You? I heard that coming up here. <laughs> So what is a prussic knot? I imagine it was originally developed by rock climbers and tree climbers, maybe military, but it's allowed to slide up and down your knot. When pressure is applied, it locks up and doesn't go anywhere. To loosen it, all you do is take pressure off and it'll slide back and forth. So it's a really convenient knot to use on your deer stand hookup. So this is what a prussic knot looks like before it's attached to your safety rope. All you do is send it through once, send it through twice, and send it through a third time. That third time can be And you dress it, and by that I mean make it look clean to where they're stacked and you can, you can visibly count that there's six loops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Your tag end needs to be at least an inch and a half long and uh, a tight overhand knot to hold it together. See, so sticks, so we're good to go up. This week we're headed to the land of the blues. That's right, we're headed to Tennessee. The game is powered by Scentlock. Finally, the glory days are near. We're headed to Tennessee to do all the prep work to put in our buck fever food plots, hang in the moultries. With all this hard work, hopefully it's going to pay off with a good velvet deer. We got it stripped with the chicory. We got it stripped with the uh, support and wall. Derek just put that in. He come in and terminated all the weeds the other day and killed everything off so we could come in here and do the prep work. And uh, this is my favorite time of year because one, you get to you get to watch something new evolve and see the product that we use work. And uh, we went with a quick start clover because it germinates with the seed blends and just establishes that plot a whole lot quicker. And uh, I'm excited. setting traps, we're putting the pieces of the puzzle together, hanging the moultries, we got the attracts out, we're putting in food plots, we're doing all the blood, sweat, and tears, so hopefully we can get our five seconds of glory. Stuff, throw that right there. Right there. So all you gotta do is how we do a chunk out. So tracks, the tracks block, done. That easy, that simple. Another delta deployed from Moultrie. It's locked and loaded. We just put a new delta out for Moultrie. We got this gnarly big cement tree right here. You don't get that. Like that's like finding the Willy Wonka golden ticket and it's right in this giant funnel finger, two big fields on each side. It's like Christmas time. You don't know what's gonna come up, you know. Santa's about to come down the chimney and we a little eight year old kid ready to go open presents. So we're gonna sit back, learn, and enjoy and take every every second of it in and just see if we can't figure these big bucks out. All right, y'all, we just got the brand new Novix in. And I'm excited about it because it's right up my alley. 
the deal is they're made for running and gunning and lightweight and durable and the deal is they're made in the USA it don't get no better than that we're about to go put them up in the kill tree I'm telling you right now buddy that's not gone when the rut gets here and deer is not going to stand a chance the game is brought to you by Moultrie Mobile, Bear Archery, Trophy Ridge, Apex Outdoor Rewards, White Tail Challenge, Woodhaven Custom Calls, SWI Land Management, and Scentlock. Last fuel stop for the day. We're about to get amped up. We're gonna slide to Tennessee and see our old boy Derek. Alan's gonna be in camp with us. Uh, TC's gonna be there. It's gonna be a good time. We're gonna have us a party. We're rolling the camp, and everybody in town's here. It's a party, y'all. Errors are getting slung, lies are getting told, but hey, we wouldn't have it any other way. I was fixing my bed. And that might know a person. Because Levi, he's got bad back problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, give me a ratchet strap. I mean, you have been bulking up. Is that what it is? It's the head. head. <laughs> Sitting here waiting for the phone to go off and see what deer's showing up still. It's hot, it's 90 degrees, we're out here sweating. But it's going to be a good time. Camera's open. Oh, that was his hand. That's not as crazy. There ain't a dent in my truck, so I'm going. The game is brought to you by Hulk Optics, Buck Fever Seed Company, Zeus Broadheads, Shafe Sauce, Deception Sense, and Redfin Polarized Sunglasses. Sitting over this brand new food plot we put in back in June, late June, first of July, we're trying to target one bull. It's called Short Time. It's just a big, mature, probably four and a half, five year old eight point. We're just gonna sit back, relax, enjoy the evening. And hopefully, we're gonna get a five seconds of gold in Tennessee. an hour getting near with no wind we're sitting on pins and needles we're covered up in deer and at this point we can't move we can't do nothing we are stuck and all of a sudden I hear some footsteps to my left I look there comes short time our target bus The first buck of the year. 
with a brand new redemption from Barry Archer. He KO it, don't get no better than that. He's dead right there. I'm talking about put him on his face, brother, long and smoke him. Son, it don't get no better than that. I'm talking overtime. Yes. We set the trap. We set the trap, give me some. We set the trap and we got it done. We just climbed down out of the tree. Had to get down. And put another one in. When I shot him, I don't, everything was such a blur. I don't know, like it broke him down. I, I felt like I made a great shot on him. I just broke him down. I got another one in him. And literally, from where I shot him, he might have crawled five yards. So, that's raw. Short time, eight is down. Look at the mass. I mean, it don't get no better than that, y'all. That's why we busted. That's why we put the sweat in July to get the blood in in August. First set of 2021, y'all. Me and my man Levi Wilson behind the camera. It was probably one of the most most gnarliest early season hunts I've ever had. Man, we was covered up. We were tagged out in Tennessee for the early season velvet hunt, y'all. We don't get no better than that. <sighs> what a way to kick off deer season. Everything played in our favor, and it don't get no better than that. We got our five seconds of glory in Tennessee. Big thanks to my buddies in Tennessee for having me up. Now let's keep this train rolling. So by far the safest way to go up and down a tree without ever having to be un unhooked is to use a, a lifeline or a safety line. It's a static rope, you know, probably rated for, for climbing and such. It's TMA certified by the Tree Stand Manufacturers Association. It, this one actually has two prussics set up. So, you know, maybe a, a cameraman and a hunter, um, or, or you and your kid. So we're gonna use our lineman's belt to go to the top of the tree to hook this up. That way we're 100% safe, never gonna be unhooked. And it'll be there from here on out. All right, good luck. Top of the morning to you fellers and gals too, if y'all watching. Um, morning number one in Oklahoma, we are hunting with my buddy Shane from Habitat Solutions and uh, hunting ground that he has access to. He uh, builds duck ponds, duck impoundments, and that kind of thing. So he's got some property just kicked dad off at a spot that he's got like a, some oats and wheat and stuff planted and he's gonna go climb over it it's kind of a just winging it this morning because we hadn't had time to really get our feet up under us yet got in yesterday evening but uh, I'm gonna go down here to a spot like I said he builds duck impoundment so he's got a lot of like canals and waterways and whatever so we got a spot down here the deer kind of choked down uh, to where they got like a crossing across these canals and stuff and they taking path the least resistance we're gonna try to capitalize on that it's november 7th so should be in the heat of things i'm gonna kill big bucks real big gonna try to get in this gnarly little thing to about right in there won't be able to get real high i think that crossing is right in here somewhere you can't tell because of the cattails, you can't see over them, and you can't walk around there to look because of the ditch. Welcome to a tree in Oklahoma. It's uh, just now official sunrise, and uh, we're just getting situated. It's our first morning, a little, running a little behind, got to get everything situated, but in a little bitty flipping tree. I, mean, I don't know if you can see how big this tree is. I almost fit my fingers around it, but little scrubby trees along this uh, ditch here. Got into it. Honestly, not near as much 
of an issue getting into as I thought it was going to be. We uh, got us a spot shoot to this culvert crossing that we hope is going to be funneling these deer across this ditch. We're sitting right on top of the ditch. We're probably about yeah, four, 14 feet up maybe. Uh, got really good cover because we're in one of these little pin oak trees that's just thick. Got a bunch of limbs. But uh, we can shoot to the culvert crossings 40 yards and the road that runs on the other side of the ditch comes right by us here. So ever since we got here, we've had a deer blowing at us right there. We got up the tree and got situated and she just, or it just flew two more times. I don't know if it's a doe, it could be a 280 inch double drop time. I don't know, but it's a deer. But hopefully it'll go on about its business and leave us alone and we can sit this culvert crossing along this ditch here for the next couple of hours and see something. Outside his ears and deep chocolate horns and just like a big, big deer. Um, just had a small buck go across that little pond dike over there, right where they were. And I just got three or four deer running back to the left right here. I'm betting they're, I'm betting they're cutting that north side and they're catching some of my wind and taking off. So. I guess. It looks like we guessed wrong. We've seen a bunch of deer though. I don't know how many deer we've seen. It's been a bunch.
it is about time just changed so it's got everything a little bit weird 8.45 so it would typically be 9.45 uh, the movement's kind of slowed up slown slowed down slown down slown I don't know if Sloan's word is slowed. It has slowed down. Um, I don't know how long we're going to hang in here today. Because I know we want to go to another piece of the ground. and uh, Not an unfamiliar piece of ground, but uh, somewhat unknown. And we wanted to do a little looking on it today. And... Uh, so I don't know how much time we're going to spend in a tree today. I need to send out, see what time everybody wants to get down. But uh, I don't know how many deer we saw today. A pile. Seen a bunch of deer. Uh, only one I could have shot was the young eight pointer, even though he was beautiful. Laid out really wide, decent tine, chopping horns, just a pretty deer. But he was. Uh, young and thin but that's the only deer we could have killed at all the ones we saw even though most of them are right here in bow range they just come to this to do this timber you can't shoot anything unless it's like 10 yards and most of them are about 30 to 35 yards so anyways um yeah that's an update
10 o'clock, which is typically 11 o'clock. But this time change, no way, yeah, yeah, got it right. Um, and I think I'm fixing to climb, even though it wasn't 20 minutes ago that I saw those three bucks chase that doe through here. It seems kind of like the wrong thing to do, but, um, it's one of those days you could sit here all day and probably see deer. And while that's tempting, we got this other piece of ground that we really want to go put our feet on and go look at. It's kind of somewhat, somewhat virgin ground. We got a pile of cameras with us. Um, and we just kind of want to look at the other ground to see what it has to offer. And... As fun as it is up here sitting near seeing these deer, we just don't know what what we could be missing, you know. Sometimes it's not always better around the next bend, but man, I sure like looking around that next bend. All that being said, I probably should have just shot that deer <laughs> that walked right here across the that we set up for deer to walk across. I hadn't seen hardly any deer walk across that thing all morning, and we had two little spikers come out right here. I was hoping one of those was a doe because I was going to shoot it, but it was mostly two spikes. And we had a little basket rack come across the culvert. That's the first deer we've seen come across the culvert all day. Then I looked up there and saw a doe coming out of the timber. Saw her way back there. I looked at her through glasses and I thought, nice fat doe. I hope she comes through here. Well, she did and she came across the culvert, which is 40, which is very comfortable, but she was really on edge. Um, last thing I want to do is make a questionable shot on a doe um so i was hoping she's gonna walk up this road here at 22 24 but she didn't so luckily i didn't shoot her because there was three bucks following her um and i'm pretty sure it was the deer that i watched go across the pond dike over here earlier this morning the frame set up the same but it was an older deer and it he probably needed an arrow i sent shane a clip of him and he says man that deer that deer needed an arrow, and I said, yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing, but uh, morning number one, and anyways, I say all that to say, I think I'm going to pack this stuff up and head down so we can go look at that other property, maybe back over here on this side, uh, a little bit later, I don't know, we'll see how the, how the day goes. Thirty-two years and over 500 episodes of Ted Nugent's Spirit of the Wild TV. Closed captioning presented by Gold Tip. Stay tough. Stay true. <laughs> So, Rana, great job. Great job. Ted Nugent, where's Ted Nugent? Where's Ted? Huh? Look at you. You doing well? You are a handsome devil. Thank you. Great job, Ted. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here.
Ted Nugent, Spear of the Wild, is brought to you by Armslist.com, America's firearms marketplace. My Pillow, guaranteed the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own. Black Rifle Coffee Company, Walker's Gamier, Cold Steel, Muddy Tree Stands, Remington Ammunition, Matthews Archery, Boss Buck Feeders, Doug McCombs Camelot Ridge Resort, EMP Shield, revolutionizing the EMP defense industry, and Hunter Nation Foundation, uniting hunters to protect our way of life. This segment of Ted Nugent's Spirit of the Wild is brought to you by the American Spirit soundtrack on Ted's new album, Detroit Muscle, available at tednugent.com. Look at you, real Michigan. This is real Michigan. We love cold October rain. Bring it on. The great Ted Nugent. He's the only one really dressed properly. Thank you, Ted. Very good. Great job. We appreciate it, Ted. Down right there. Down in the tank blind on the 4M. How cool is that? What a beautiful, beautiful, mature South Texas whitetail buckaroo. Happy birthday, Dad. December 17th, 2021. 101 years since my dad was born. And that's why I'm here with a bow and arrow. My dad was a bow hunter when I was born in 1948. He was a visionary. He was a great dad. Here's to all the dads out there who teach their children to aim small, miss small, and pursue the martial art of bow hunting. And God bless the tank blind and the Matthews bow and the gold tip arrows and mossy oak. God bless everybody who sports the spirit of the wild. We are blood brothers. Hallelujah. And you know what? We're going to sit here a while longer. That beautiful eight point is down right there. And I got more arrows and more tags. Arrows and tags. What else is there? Happy birthday, Dad. God bless the bull hunters of America. Welcome back to Ted Nugent, Spear of the Wild. You're watching the Queen of the Forest. You know, when we first started producing Ted Nugent's Spirit of the Wild, three decades, more than three decades ago, we thought about what having this hunting, fishing lifestyle really meant to us. And it is very spiritual. To me, it's, it's where a lot of people find God. Ted doesn't come to church with me often, but because he says he finds God outdoors. And I feel like there's a healing power of Mother Nature, of God, in God's great design, and in, in watching the wildlife, and listening to the birds, and the trees rustling in the wind, and, make, and at night when you hear the animal noises, it's kind of scary but exciting, especially in Africa. So Ted Nugent, Spirit of the Wild, is more than just a TV show. It's a lifestyle. And we're glad you're here. This segment of Ted Nugent Spirit of the Wild is brought to you by the provider. Finish what you started. And now, here's our provider tip of the week. 
How are you, Mr. Ted Nugent, Miss Shemaine? Thank you so much for having us on this week's episode of Spirit of the Wild. We're excited about today's recipe. It's the Snow Goose Breakfast Casserole. We start with our meat grinder and we mix a little bit of pork fat, a little bit of maple flavoring, and we get that goose breakfast sausage. It's a real easy recipe, foil tin. We start with some of our Napa Valley olive oil and we just coat the bottom of it. We take our shredded hash brown style potatoes. We mix them right across the bottom, layering it. I take some of the provider fowl rub, sprinkle that across your shredded potatoes. Then we're gonna layer that goose meat right across the potatoes. We're gonna take our green bell pepper, put it across that goose meat and potato, white onion, with some jalapenos. After I have a dozen eggs and we're going to take that and layer that right across the top. We have a cheese mix of Monterey Jack and cheddar. We're going to go one hour at 350 on our Traeger, but right before I do that, I'm just going to take one piece of foil, cover the casserole, and there you have it. We'll let it cook for exactly one hour. We took the foil off for the last 10 minutes. You can cut it no problem with the spatula. How's it taste, Joel? People say you can't eat snow goose. Delicious. There you have it. Provider Snow Goose Casserole with the Traeger. Thank you all for joining us this week at the Provider Outdoor Kitchen, Chad Belding, Jennifer Swenson, Clay Belding. Spirit of the Wild, we'll be back at you next week. This segment of Ted Nugent Spirit of the Wild is brought to you by Primos, Speak the Language, Boning Archery. They've been at it as long as Ted has. Come and take it. I dare you. Come and Spirit of the Wild is brought to you by our great friend, Doug McComb, at Camelot Ridge Resort. The hunt, the experience, the memories. Mossy Oak, it's not a passion, it's an obsession. Rockin' Dave right now? I'm rolling, buddy. All right, uh, we're filming this for the uh, Ted Nugent Spirit of the Wild TV extravaganza because right, so. uh, we like to communicate. The universal positive spirit communication, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Boy, that's radical. I'm a, that's going to be suppressed. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Who do I think I am? A free man or something? Like I might have a constitution I can rely on? Maybe some outrageous radical document like the Bill of Rights? Is uh, Bill here tonight? Is the rights here today. Yeah. All right, we're going to view this live. I'm for Ted Nugent's Spirit Campfire with John Frankus. 
It's the physics of spirituality with attitude. Like I said, John, we're at a place called the uh, Camelot Ridge Resort, and I got a bunch of great guys here that are working very hard. What Hunter Nation and HuntTheVote.org is about is that we need to remind people that the only reason that evil persists is because good men do nothing. And the days of doing nothing are over. So the Spirit Campfire should encourage people to not just talk positivity, not just share positivity with your fellow positivity friends, but to demand positivity. And it's really simple. God, family, country, constitution, freedom, conservation, the traditional American family values that created the greatest quality of life in the history of the world, the, 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 the Ten Commandments, the Golden Rule. We have always said and celebrated, John, that mm -hmm. the Ted Nugent Spirit Campfire should be the battle cry of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And if you're not demanding that, from your mayor, your congressman, your senator, your governor, your president, your elected employees. If you're not demanding that, you end up with Seattle. If you're not demanding constitutional accountability, you end up with Portland, Oregon. If you're not fighting for the good, the bad and the ugly of Chicago and New York City and Minneapolis and Atlanta, where there are entire neighborhoods burnt to the ground, if you're not fighting against the negativity, you can't just be like, you can't be like Miss America when she's asked, now that you're Miss America, what are you going to do? Well, tomorrow I'm going to end all wars, end world hunger, and bring peace to mankind. Yeah, well, keep us posted on how you're doing that, baby. So we can't just live a, a little fantasy. You've got to actually be active. This segment of Ted Nugent Spirit of the Wild is brought to you by Tank Blinds, the best blinds in the world. Big time, attract, develop, grow. And Remington Ammo, the deadliest mushroom in the woods. Ted Nugent Spirit of the Wild is brought to you by armslist.com, America's firearms marketplace. My pillow. Guaranteed the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own. Black Rifle Coffee Company. Walker's Gainier. Cold Steel. Muddy Tree Stands. Remington Ammunition. Matthews Archery. Buck Peters. Doug McCombs Camelot Ridge Resort. EMP Shield. Revolutionizing the EMP defense industry. And... Hunter Nation Foundation, uniting hunters to protect our way of life. This segment of Ted Nugent Spirit of the Wild is brought to you by Max Motors Team in the heartland, the best car dealers in America. FullCircleProgram.com, giving hope to families through compassion, enthusiasm, and love. just what the doctor ordered, man. Christmas is right around the corner, and this will be a Christmas ornament, a cherry snow cone shaft of life, and there's my buck right there. Thank you, Greg Mosing and everybody at the 4M here in Uvalde, Canipa, Sabinel. This is wide open, 8,000 acres. Just dream historical hunting. Look at that. That's the uh, exit there. Look at this exit here, Bob. I got that buck. Beautiful, beautiful. Texas white tail. Are you kidding me? Oh boy, a mature daddy. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Just as classic, literally a gift from God. If I was going to put together a Texas calendar, this guy could be on the cover of it. And by the way, a big salute to everybody at Texas Trophy Hunters and Texas Trophy Hunters Journal. Thank you, Horace Gore and everybody there. Uh, Jerry, I've been writing for the Texas uh, Trophy Journal, Texas Trophy Hunters Journal for Jesus. It's been like 15, 16 years, Bob. 
All right, look at, he's an old boy. Look at this mature, classic South Texas buck, probably five or six years old. Took a perfect arrow. He didn't even know he was hit. Then he finally figured out that the lifeblood was running out and he darted over here and died. Beautiful. How beautiful is this, huh? Pretty arrow. Hey, Dave. Dave Watson, my co-producer, my spirit of the wild editing blood brother, just sent me a picture of his new Fender Stratocaster guitar. Nicely done, Dave. Just a great, great comrade and a blood brother for celebrating the American conservation spirit of the wild hands-on God's work dream. Nicely done, Dave. Dave, look at my buck. Show that arrow in slow motion, maybe even stop action. Let's start showing arrows in stop action because that was a pretty, pretty mystical flight. Of my name is Ted Nugent. This is the Spirit of the Wild, and this is my lifestyle. And if you believe in freedom, if you believe in life, liberty, and the pursuit of backstrap happiness, please go to HunterNation.org. HunterNation.org. We're fighting to make sure that the creeps who hate freedom, we can stop them in their tracks. HunterNation.org is the Spirit of the Wild. We're going to get some pictures and drag him behind some bushes and knock another arrow. Bye. A big salute to Joe Rogan and John Dudley. I've been doing Joe Rogan podcasts celebrating John Dudley, the master of mystical flight of the arrow. So many, and Cameron Haynes and, and uh, Levi and Samantha Morgan. So many dedicated, all the bone collector guys. God bless Nick and, and T-Bone and Michael and everybody out there that promotes and celebrates the perfection of hands-on conservation, especially with the mystical to the air. All right, I'll shut up now. Well, maybe I won't shut up. Fat chance, huh? I got a lot to say because the American dream is worth celebrating every day of your life. Thank you, buddy. You are a beautiful, beautiful buck. What a great arrow. I got him. And by the way, I want to mention, this is for George Britton. I always aim at a squirrel behind the shoulder. <laughs> I saw a squirrel there. And I said, well, shoot the squirrel in the eye. Oh. And then you don't have to worry about a deer with big lungs. I think the arrow went on about here, came out there, he was dead on his feet. George Britton, this one's for you, buddy. This segment of Ted Nugent Spirit of the Wild is brought to you by the personally autographed Come Take It hat by Ted Nugent, only available at tednugent.com. Come take it. And Ted Nugent Sunrise Safaris. Come on. All right, so what do you think? First Mossy Oak Moments Live, I loved it. Such great content. And remember, every week, same time on the Mossy Oak Go app, and it's free. No excuse not to be here. Great stuff coming up. See you in a week.